quarterback, Jameis Winston. He was last year's Heisman Trophy winner. After week one, we have arguably a front runner for the Heisman Trophy. I know, way too early. But George's Todd Gurley was a man child in week one. Gurley's got the corner. Gurley's got the end zone. One of the premier players in all of college football. Todd will bring this one out. And there he goes. Coast to coast. Can he make it? Yes, he can. He has lit the crowd in Sanford Stadium. Gurley broke a tackle. Gurley heads to the end zone. And he broke free again. And Todd Gurley down the sideline and goal. Just like practice, you know. I practice hard every day. I finish early. Love you, baby. Todd Gurley in week one set Georgia's single game record for total offense. 293 yards, I should say total yards. 198 rushing, 100 returning. All-purpose yards. He broke Rodney Hampton's 1987 school record. If there were any questions about his health, he answered them. If there were any questions about how explosive he could be after last season, he answered those. And if you're Georgia, and you saw what Todd Gurley did, especially in that second half, boy, you got to feel real good about this upcoming season. Buck and I were just talking, yeah. watching the highlights there, okay? <laughs> Powerful, yes. Has that speed, yes. Yeah. But explosiveness, you see, like, even when he's breaking tackles, how quickly he gets from zero to 60 is like instantly for a big back. I mean, you think power backs don't do that. He runs away from people. That's what makes it so difficult on a defense is a guy who can run over you or around you. Jason just said ESP, explosion speed and power, and he's mean. You know, when you have that combination, that's tough to stop. And there's offensive linemen want to block for a guy like that. I think Herschel was on the sideline there, and it, <laughs> it, it, it probably helped Ty Gurley. Because remember last year we were calling him Gershel? He, he didn't like that, and Keith Marshall didn't, and I can see why. He said, look, I'm my own guy. And, and Keith Marshall's a good player. He's coming back from a knee injury. But Ty Gurley, if he stays healthy, can be one of those special line of backs that come, have come out of Georgia. No Sean Moreno. I mean, the list is endless. Harrison Hurst. Yeah, the, the list is endless. I mean, you think of Georgia running backs, you think of this is a guy you look now, he might be in those annuals now. <laughs> That's a good company. The other part of it, in the second half, Clemson could do nothing offensively. Just one first down, 15 total yards. The impact that Jeremy Pruitt had on this Georgia defense. I think we talked a lot about, you know, Georgia's shortcomings last year on defense. And then this year, the ability to get 11 talented guys on the same page. Last year, it seemed like it was kind of like a fire drill. They were just kind of going in different directions. Nobody really trusted anybody, so they were always trying to do somebody else's job instead of their own. And all it takes is one guy not to do his job, and they run a play in that gap, and it's out the gate for a touchdown. This year, that first game anyway, they looked like it was 11 guys on the same page with the same goal. Um, and on the flip side, you, you got, you know, Clemson gassed and tired. It, it it helps to be fresh and rested. And so with Georgia's ability to run the ball like yeah. they did, their defense was sipping Gator in the sideline. They've become the favorite in the SEC East. Yeah, 15 rushes for Gurley and then all the other touches. So if they can do that throughout the year and not give them 20, 25, this is going to be a tough team. Yeah, you're out this weekend. LSU, how about the furious comeback they staged against Wisconsin? Down 17 in the second half. LSU rallied for a 28-24 win. And you know what? All the hype was around their running back, Leonard Fournette. He didn't really do much. It was the senior running back, Kenny Hilliard. Well, Kenny Hilliard went off, but I want to know why Melvin Gordon is in the witness protection for him. We'll get, we'll get uh, I mean, but Kenny Hilliard showed, that's another situation where you hear, hear, hear all this talk all offseason. Leonard Fournette, the best thing coming, the best thing since sliced you bread. You are hearing the best <laughs> SEC running back since Herschel Walker, which is, you know, you're yeah. really pumping the hype machine there. I was excited to see him play. I'd heard so much about this young man. Unfortunately, Kenny Hiller's like, whoa, slow your roll. I'm still here. And what that does a lot of times, it fires up the rest of the team, the rest of the position, because they're thinking to themselves, all right, this guy's coming in to take reps from us. If I want to play, I've got to go out and produce. And what you do is you create a competition. Yeah. And this is, where the big, this is where the good programs stay good, is they recruit talent that wants to compete. And these guys come in, they compete. And all of a sudden, Kenny yeah. Hilliard, he, look, he, he may look better this year than they did last hey, year. We need to have the Nate Dog Award of Hope. Hold up. He's like, wait, I'm the guy that has this position, so don't you come in here talking that trash. But on the other side, Melvin, Melvin. Uh, and, and, uh, really a uh, cryptic answer from the head coach as to why he didn't see more snaps in the second half. You know, we, we heard maybe it's part of a rotation thing, but uh, he, he dominated 
when he was in the game. Let me just say something. This, this whole offensive system that was put in place was to run the football. That's what Wisconsin does best. Okay, then they put in a quarterback who doesn't throw very well. And he clearly didn't in that football game. So you rely a lot on your run game. And then you have a guy like Melvin Gordon who you don't utilize in the second half. And it, if you said, you know, rotation, rotation's out the door. When you're trying to win a football game, I don't care what the rotation says. It says the next guy gets 10. Mm -mm -mm. Put your stud back in. We're struggling right now. They're slowly making gains. They were holding them to field goals. Okay, but they were chipping away at that lead, okay, after the fake punt. Then all of a sudden they get close, they take the lead. Now they're trying to throw the ball. Yeah. And that is not what they do. So tell me he's hurt. Tell me he had a dispute with the coach. Tell me something because he's not only your best running guy, he's your best receiver out of the backfield. They use him in jet sweeps. They use him all kind of ways. So if you're going to beat a team like LSU, this is a great opportunity if you're Wisconsin, to beat an LSU who hadn't lost in 100 games, I mean, I'm exaggerating. A lot of games against a non-conference game, opponent. 41 games since non-conference opponents, and you have them on the ropes, and you know, I, I just, I want to have know. one of the five best running backs in college football who decided Feed to him. come back to school for another year. You got to keep him happy, too, besides feeding him. You're not a guy who's all like this. Give him, tell me why you weren't feeding him. Yeah. Now, well, we all want to know what happened to him.